Okay, I want to talk about inverse inverse ETFs, exchange traded funds, because in the scenario just coming off of 2015, 2016, with all the the uncertainty in the markets, people are looking at how to protect themselves if the markets go down, if, if we get another 2008 scenario, right? But before we can get to inverse, and before we get to ETF, we have to understand how we got here. And it really all started with an index. Now, everybody's, I'm sure, familiar with the index like the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is 30 stocks. These are 30 of the biggest companies that are not transportation or utility stocks. And although you can buy an ETF that tracks the Dow Jones Industrial Average, not many people do that. A lot of people do purchase the S&P 500 index. This is 500 of the most widely held companies. Now this is a market cap, market cap weighted index, meaning that every stock in the S&P 500 is represented in proportion to its market cap. That's why, for instance, the, the top 45 of the 500 stocks make up for more than 50% of the uh, value of the S&P 500. And they do make changes to the S&P 500 periodically. Uh, well, they do it every year because there's mergers and some companies go under and so forth. And it's not much. Sometimes they make 10 or uh, 20 stock changes in the S&P 500. Another index you're probably familiar with is the Russell 2000, invented by Frank Russell in 1984. And this is mainly small cap stocks, so companies that are roughly in the 500 to $550 million uh, market cap range. To give you a perspective, Walmart is a nearly $200 billion, that's a B, market cap. And Target is about $45 billion. So... You take the average stock in the Russell 2000 and target is roughly 100 times larger than that. So these are the indexes. Now, you can invest in them. You can buy the S&P 500 index. You can buy the Russell 2000, the Wilshire 5000, and so forth. One of the flaws to an index is that it only trades once per day. And that's after market hours, after 4 o'clock. And it's the same way, that's how mutual funds trade. They trade after the market closes. So back in the 2000s, uh, ETFs were invented mainly be- to address this issue. They wanted more tradability. They wanted more liquidity. So ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. Okay, so that, that name should tip you off as to the characteristic of the investment. Exchange traded, meaning we can go out and buy an S&P 500 ETF. We could go buy the NASDAQ 100, the, you know, it's the QQQ, which is 100 of the largest NASDAQ stocks. And we could buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. We could do it 20, 50 times in a single day, right? Uh, you hear this term day traders and ETFs are certainly used by the high volume traders. Why? Because they have incredible liquidity. And that liquidity comes from being able to trade as much as you want to. So with that liquidity came the ability to really start focusing on different sectors within the economy. So you can buy ETFs that focus just on biotech stocks or just the top financial bank stocks. There's It's just endless the number of ETFs you can do. Now, let's get to why we started this video, and that's an inverse ETF. So what, first of all, what is an inverse ETF? And then I'm going to go through a little math here. An inverse ETF is basically these ETFs we're talking about, but they are opposite what the regular ETF did. So let's just take a simple example. Let's say we have an S&P 500 ETF, and the S&P is off. Let's say, you know, it's down 1% for the day. Well, there is an inverse ETF, meaning if they've taken a short position, a short position of the 500 stocks in an ETF. So it's a short ETF. So in this scenario, if the S&P was down 1%, this short ETF would be up 1%. 
And that's why you hear about the high volume traders, the day traders, they're using these ETFs. First of all, they want the ETFs for liquidity on the upside, but they also want to be able to get the downside. So they're, they're constantly buying and selling these. So in this scenario of people being scared of a repeat of another 2008, they want to be able to protect themselves by having a short ETF. Meaning if we do this scenario with this massive sell-off of 2008, they want to actually make money, right? And we're not talking about making 1%. We're talking about making double-digit returns in a very short period of time because you have a short ETF. As the market's going down, your ETF is going up. Now, one word of caution here, which is why I wanted to do this video, is a, a, an ETF, a short ETF is not something you can hold long-term. You cannot hold it long term. This is for short term holds only. And let's go through the math and I think it'll, it'll make sense to you. Let's say we have an asset that is worth $100. And that asset, uh, the first day one goes down to 90. So that, that's a loss of 10%. The second day it goes down to 80. So that's a loss of 11% meaning from 90 to 80 it's 11%. So if we had a short ETF in this scenario, day one, our $100, we made 10%. So it'd be 100 times 1.10. The next day we held it, it went down, we made 11%. So that's times 1.11. So in dollars, we would have made $22, right? You do that math. Now let's say that on the the third day, this came roaring back to $100, okay? Now, that's a 25% increase in value from 80 to 100. But if this is an inverse, so this is actually a negative return for us if we're holding it inverse. This goes against us, right? So our 122, because that's how much we have, that value times the negative 25, equals a negative in dollar dollar wise this is a dollar negative thirty dollars right so thirty dollars from 122 we are actually holding an asset of 92 dollars so we started with a hundred we went up to 122 the market returned back to 100 exact same price three days later and we lost eight dollars right why this is the this is the math of holding an inverse ETF through volatility. They're not designed to be held through volatility. They're designed to be held through a direction in the market. If you're, the market's going down and you're inverse, you're going to make money. If you're holding a regular ETF and the market goes up direction, then you're making money there. Now, in typical scenarios, before the, the inverse ETF was invented, people would just simply use options and short the market. Now, if I held an option for a period of time, let's say it was a one week or a two week option, right? And the scenario was the price of the asset started at 100 and within three days, it you know, so it went down to 90, down to 80 and went back up to 100. In my short position, you know, I paid for this. I paid the option price for this. But in the short position, was I harmed at all? No, because the asset in the context of holding a short position didn't move. It started at 100 and ended at 100. But if you owned it through a short ETF, you went through this pain and you actually lost $8. Okay, so I wanted to walk you through that. Because there's a lot of appeal for people to own these inverse ETFs. And I understand that. I, I totally get that. But I just want you to understand they are not long-term holds and that you just need to be cautious of that. So hopefully this was helpful. As always, you can go to the brinkmanacademy.com and see all our different videos there and communicate with us. Sign up for our monthly newsletter, The Alert, and, and position papers. And also don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Okay? Thanks for watching.